I haven't really done a video like this before, so I thought I'd experiment with creating a vlog or vlog. I think it's a cool way to capture my thoughts, kind of like a journal, I guess, but also share some insight that I've gained from my life and as an occupational therapist. The title of this video is Family Barriers and Estrangement, which is kind of provocative. Family is often seen as a loving thing that is supposed to be supportive and all that good, positive, lovey-dovey stuff. But we all know this is not true, at least not 100% of the time. What's unfortunate as a kid and when you grow up is you don't get to really choose your family. You are born into it, adopted into one, or you kind of build your own based on your circumstances and what's given around you when you're a kid anyways. Something that has been on my mind is the parent and child relationship. Someone once brought up a good point to me that, quote, just because you are a parent, either a mother or a father, does not give you a free pass to treat your child the way you want or behave the way that you do, end quote. So coming from an Asian family, especially with strong Asian values, I think many of you, even from other backgrounds, probably can relate to this. We are taught to keep our mouths shut, keep our heads down, look the other way, you know. And the ethical dilemma comes when the things that your parents do or your family members do aren't in theirs or your own best interests. This could be arguments between your parents or them yelling at you, things that they may say that may lower your confidence or your self-esteem or they may be very judgmental. And that can be very confusing, even hypocritical. And as a kid, that really sucks. You kind of just have to take it. Like you can't challenge your parents or get into an argument with them. At least I didn't really much as a kid. I mean, you can do that, but it often doesn't end well for the kid. And I think in a way, parents perhaps will always see their children as like children and not adults. I don't know. So what happens if a child is quote smarter than them or they're better at say debating or they've been more successful or whatever it may be. Well, of course that may possibly lower the parents confidence and they may become more insecure. But parents should be proud, I think, of the children for having these qualities, for being able to defend themselves and using their critical thinking, you know? It's a sign of maturity and growth. So you can imagine the freedom that I felt when I moved out from college from living with my parents. Not just like physically, but spiritually and mentally. Not that there's anything necessarily wrong with living with your parents, I did it for a long time, you know, but it's a case by case thing and everybody's situation is different. What moving out did for me though, was it allowed me to grow and mature, to make my own mistakes and then learn from them. You know, it's very powerful to be accountable for them in your actions. It made me feel like I was more like an adult. So perhaps this is getting at what I mean in this video's title, Family Barriers, part anyways, to one's self-growth. And this is interesting because the family, you know, just I think Brawley was traditionally very big and they're all together like under one roof and there's multiple generations. Now across all cultures that we are seeing even around the world, the family is getting smaller and smaller and the kids are moving out. You know, as soon as they're adults, they may get a job or whatever, and they're living on their own, separate from their family, let alone having grandparents there under the same roof. Another topic that I have been really wanting to explore, or at least talk about, is family estrangement. And that's the second part of this video's title. What I mean in estrangement, of course, there's a really extremes, but I think there are degrees and varying degrees of it and shades of it. 
from say either talking to your family member less all the way up to completely cutting them out from your lives and not talking to them at all. And I think it's easy to judge you know, like people and their family relationships as an outsider, especially if you come from values such as family being everything or family being very important or family comes first, right? You hear that one a lot. And I think avoiding being judgmental is very important and helpful for you to gain insight because you just don't know each person's individual situation and their story and their circumstances. Perhaps there may even be abuse or trauma or neglect and so on. So even if there are none of these extreme things going on, there could be, you know, a psychological impact like that can wear on the child. And it might not even be an explicit or conscious thing. It may be subconscious, you know, and the person may not even realize that it's happening to them and what it's doing to them. So for me, I have actually cut some family members from my life recently, and it was one of the hardest things I think that I've ever had to really do when it comes to relationships anyways. But due to its past effect on my mental health, the pros ultimately outweigh the cons. And I was reading a book that was intended really for parents whose kids essentially ghosted them. It's called Rules of Estrangement by Joshua Coleman. And in the opening chapter, he describes a parent who came to him and they presented a letter to the author. And the letter was from the child saying that they did not want to have a relationship with this particular parent anymore. And the parent didn't know what to do. They had to go and see psychologists for that. So I am glad that a book like this exists and it was written because it kind of helps parents, like specifically parents, understand things potentially from the child's perspective and perhaps even allow them to empathize with them because, well, the parent's always been a parent their whole life from the parent perspective, I think anyways. So then thinking, what is it then that leads a child to want to not have a relationship with their parent anymore? Either one of them or both of them or even their family members altogether in like extremes. Where did the parent or the family members go wrong? One possible reason is that maybe they weren't listening to this particular person. Or they perceived, say, the child's actions as childlike, despite the best intentions of the child or, you know, them trying their best to either impress their parents or just do better. And a lot of times, these behaviors that the parents may do to the child may even be hurtful or harmful. Things even as simple as the tone of voice, or especially with, say, criticism or yelling or scolding. And, you know, no one really likes to be criticized, especially like over and over under the same roof for many, many years. And if nothing changes, that can really wear on one person. And what can be sad is when the parent does not realize that they're doing this and they think that they're in the right when they may be in the wrong from a third party perspective. And just like marriage, a relationship, any relationship really, like even friendships should be two ways. Otherwise it would be parasitic relationship, right? So there should be some compromise, I think. Should a child always be pleasing their parent and honoring them? Or should it be the other way around at certain times? Should a parent listen to their child or even take their advice? How about if this child became an adult and they're seeking, they have a question and it happens to be the field or career or job that the quote unquote child that became an adult is working in? Should a child always be the one or the first one to apologize even if they are not wrong? Or should a parent be willing to apologize? Even if there is no one person at fault, I don't see why not. Don't we teach our own kids to apologize when they make a mistake or if they're like rude to someone or they've done a bad thing or even may not, might not have. And it's just to keep the peace just for the heck of it. Why shouldn't the parent do that sometimes? Of course, I think parents should be given a chance, you know, to repair the relationship, to understand what's going on as it is a relationship and it's work between the two parties. 
But if time and time again, there is no change despite efforts and energy and being willing to let the parent try, but then and nothing improves and one person keeps getting hurt, then maybe it's time to consider a more serious, maybe even an ultimatum and ultimately even family estrangement or estrangement between these two parties from one person cutting it off. Life, I think, is too short to really worry about, say, harmony and the bond of your family all the time if it can hurt you mentally, especially. You have your own self-life too. And if you even have your own children, a new family that really depends on, you know, your own happiness so that they may be happy ultimately too. And, you know, so that they can grow to be happy as adults and raise their own family. And I think that your actions or even your inaction and not doing anything is a way of modeling and your child can pick up on that and that you could be perpetuating values that you don't necessarily agree with. But if you haven't done anything, that's basically an action and that could be modeling something for your own kids. So this is one insight that really weighed on me and my own decision for potentially family estrangement. Uh, should you continue to have a relationship with them if they are wearing on your mental health? So much so that you may be potentially anxious, depressed, or have low self-esteem, or feel no sense of growth, or feel like you're stuck, and you don't really have the freedom to do what you want that's in your own best interest for your own growth. So it's not an easy question to answer, of course, but what has helped me is to make a list of the pros and the cons and to highlight and prioritize what I really value and I think is important. And for example, for me, it's my own new family, my own mental health, my future and my goals with my family and collaborating with my family and what they would want too. And that would be in their best collective interests. Because as humans, I think we tend to overthink the past in the future instead of the present, but the past has already passed. In the present, you can only think and plan what action that you want to take for your future family relationships and how it may affect you. But these plans should be also in your own best future interest. So I think you should sometimes allow yourself to be selfish in these circumstances, especially for your own mental health. So what are your thoughts on this video? and what I have kind of discussed so far. Let me know in the comments if you're comfortable sharing.